Oh, a lot of people talk a lot of things with our videos. So we'll see what she does in person? Yeah. Okay. That's not Tammy. It's Tammy. You touch me, then watch me what I'm going to do. I want to move Papa. I love my family. It's going back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today we're talking about Kalani and Oswello because there's been a lot of drama going on with them on Nine Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. And it's been revealed that they have broken up because Oswello's family is incredibly toxic and they finally ruined their relationship. It's been a reoccurring theme with this couple that Oswello's family are a bunch of moochy, stinky Samoans that only view their child as a way to make money. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, they only wanted him to marry an American woman because they thought that they could get money out of her family. Yo, I got a lot of Samoan friends these people are an embarrassment and a lot of people will back me up on that. You don't look at your kid as a way to make money and take care of you your entire life. At some point, you gotta get your kid off the titty and let him start a family and worry about his family. And as a parent, you should want your kid to be happy and you shouldn't put yourself above your children. If you do so, you're a bad parent. And if you disagree and you don't think Oswello's family are a bunch of moochy scumbags, please let me know why in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at Kalani and Oswello on Night Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. We're gonna dissect their relationship, identify the problems, and give them advice for how they can fix those problems. Yeah, so basically how I keep the messes under control is I just have him have a whole room to himself that he does like his gaming in. My friend here, Justin, he's already taken and he's cracked at Fortnite, my guy. <sighs> Yo, Kalani, why would you give Oswello a gaming room when he can't hold down a job and he put two kids in you and you guys are struggling living at your parents' house? This makes zero sense. Do you not know what gamers do? Gamers game. Uh, he sleeps in there most of the time, too. So you guys generally sleep in different rooms? Yeah. Ha! <laughs> Game. If you're a proper gamer, I'm saying you're at least putting in five hours a day. Those five hours could be spent making more money for his family so he can move out of that house or dicking down his wife that obviously has not been dicked down in a while. I think I speak for all of us when I say we want to see Oswello have more ambition. This is what we would like to hear him say right here. Because I want to make bank, bro. I want to drive a Range Rover. Before we continue reviewing this couple, let me tell you about today's sponsor of this video, which is Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks. Right now, what I'm really interested in is fitness, and someone that I'm obsessed with is David Goggins. I find him very inspirational. Who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? I initially discovered him from the Joe Rogan podcast, but since then, I've been listening to a lot of his books, and right now, his book, Can't Hurt Me, is really good. It's on Audible. I really like that thought process of with enough hard work, you can transform yourself into the best version of yourself. My typical morning routine is I wake up, have a coffee, go to the gym, play his audiobook, and I work out like a crazy person. Not like a Navy SEAL. I don't want to say that because that's disrespectful to our troops. I don't know about you guys, but I'm an audio learner and I really love multitasking. So sometimes what I do is when I'm cooking or whatever I'm doing in the house, I'll put on an audiobook and I'll do my tasks and listen at the same time. Guys, make sure you click the link in the bio of this video to download Audible and get one month for free. Or go to audible.com slash wetsock or text wetsock to 500-500. Now let's go back to reviewing this dog water couple basically comes in the room when you know he wants to have sex and that's Ew. it yeah we have like conjugal visits at this point Ew. wow what a sweaty gamer boy move comes in for dick time i can't even believe that wow oswell he probably doesn't even light a candle his stupid ass probably just comes in and is like kalani i'm hard have sex with me how unromantic is that but at the same time kalani did it to herself by being a virgin for so long and then losing your virginity to the dumbest dude in samoa then not using protection getting knocked up and now she's trapped in this marriage with this guy that's just playing in video games and then dicking her down whenever he wants and she lets him girl respect yourself or at least make him light a candle and put on some soul music or something good god i don't know about y'all but i got a whole sex mix i play i got candles i got some nice ones too like low key i went to nordstrom's to get the nice candles yeah i'm actually launching my only fan soon but let's go back to reviewing this couple because that's more important i don't know i just feel like that's weird Go use your hand, bye. <laughs> Mood, sis, go use your hand, bye. I love Kalani's sister. She's low-key really funny. Like I've been saying, men ain't shit unless you guys are subscribed to this channel because then you're a wet sock and wet sock men are just built different. I've been saying that too. Do you feel like there's any like even romance between you two? No, no, like there's nothing. We don't, it feels like I live with a friend.
It's really sad to hear that their relationship has deteriorated to a point where she doesn't even feel like she has a husband as much as a roommate. A roommate that is struggling to work hard to provide for the family and also struggling to take care of the kids. Meanwhile, Kalani has to take care of all the kids herself. As bad as I want to feel for Kalani, she brought this on herself. She was a virgin and then she married the first guy that she lost her virginity to. And I know a lot of people from Utah that do this. I don't know if it's because, you know, they're Mormon and they're trying to be all religious or whatever. Here's the problem with that. I feel like in life, you should have multiple sexual partners to figure out what you like in the bedroom. And also, what's the point of marrying someone if you're not sexually compatible with that person? I know it's literally not the same thing, but when you're going to buy a car, you test drive it before you buy it. My not roommate okay. with benefits. Are they even benefits? Not really. <laughs> like there's nothing. <laughs> I feel like Kalani couldn't have picked poorer choices in her life. That being said, her and her sister, you know, their outfits are well put together. Their hair looks good. So we got to focus on the positives and not all the negatives, guys. I see him making all of these changes and I feel like I should be so happy and so excited. But then we don't go out on dates. We don't have alone time. He doesn't like try and do cute things and... No, and I'm like constantly thinking of him and thinking of what he would like or what he would yeah. want and that's never reciprocated at all. Lonnie and Oswello's relationship was rushed because they had unwanted and unplanned pregnancies, which resulted in them having a bunch of kids and living with Kalani's parents. Now, I wish I had a condom commercial for you guys, like a condom sponsorship, but I don't. But this couple is the embodiment of you should wear a condom. And he has no understanding of what real love is because he didn't see it from his parents. So I feel this need to nurture him and teach him things because he is the father of my kids. But then that's where my relationship that's romantic dies because you can't have a romantic relationship with someone that you're mommy. Well, that's not necessarily true, Kalani. A prime example of that is Mike and his weird ass mom. Not to mention all the incest that happens in West Virginia. I'm just kidding, guys. I have family in West Virginia. Shout out to all my cousins there. Y'all are great kissers. You are sus. Once again, as bad as I want to feel about the situation Kalani's found herself in, maybe next time you should get to know someone before you have children with them. Am I right? Their relationship wasn't built on love. It was built on lust. They were both really physically attracted to each other. And now the lust is dying out and they're just staying out of convenience. I don't think that this is the smart thing to do. Kalani said something like, oh, well, he's the father of my children. Well, you guys can co-parent and you can divorce and you can split your time with the kids. You don't need to stay in a relationship if you don't love somebody. You don't need to force yourself to stay because that person's the father of your children. But I feel like that's exactly what she's doing. Let's say you look at that scene when Oswell is trying to name all the good things he does for Kalani, like bringing her pizza sometimes. From the way Oswello talks about all the good things he does for Kalani, he sounds like a college boyfriend. He doesn't necessarily sound like a father and a husband. I bring you pizza. You do bring me pizza yeah. sometimes. Why did, why did you mention that? My brother all, also me. brings me food sometimes too. So we're not talking about your brother. Yeah, but I'm saying, I think your definition of romance and love is different than my definition. I think this right here is the reason why we watch the show to remind us all that our dating lives are relatively normal compared to the people on the show because I don't understand why he's getting so aggravated when she mentioned that sometimes my brother gets me food and not you. That's a weird thing to get triggered about when you're spending the majority of your time playing video games. You're playing Warzone with Andre, goofing off, being bums. Meanwhile, Kalani has to watch all the kids that you put in her. You just say, oh, my brother bring you food. I'm not talking about your brother bring you food. So, you know, Oswello reverts to when he was 12 years old and says, you need to respect me more and treat me better and not talk about your brother bring you food when I bring you food. <laughs> You're just watching this like, what are you talking about, bro? He's like actually a child. I feel like she has to take care of four boys by herself and I feel bad for her about the same time. It's like, rub her up and get to know someone before you have kids. As well, he goes on to say, I don't know why we talk about your brother though, if we talk talking about your brother though. He said something like that. I honestly butchered that. I don't even know what he said. I tune him out because it just sounds like nonsense to me. Dude, you can't be getting jealous about her mentioning her brother. She's not mentioning another guy. She's not mentioning a hot guy at work or something like that. You're getting jealous of her saying that her brother brings her food sometimes. That is the weirdest shit I've ever seen. Yo, to be fair, wait till Oswello finds out that Kalani's been ordering food from Uber Eats and Postmates. He's gonna be like, you whore. <laughs> this is just an example of what Oswello does all the time. He constantly gets annoyed at Kalani when she expresses her opinion. It's like he wants respect and he wants to be treated with respect but he doesn't respect her and he doesn't fulfill his duties as a husband or go over and beyond to make sure that his family and his wife are provided for but he gets annoyed when she expresses how she feels if we talk about us why you bring other people 
we're really good and we're having fun and then the littlest thing can set him off and it's usually the dumbest thing. I think it's funny how on the show Oswell is shown in a certain light and then meanwhile on TikTok he's like, my bestie and your bestie dancing by the fire. Like he's doing all these TikTok dances and everything. He looks all happy and Kalani's there in the background. Meanwhile on the show they look miserable and he's constantly acting like a 12 year old. I'm so over crying. There's nothing you cry. I can cry if I want to cry. Those are my feelings. Can I just have my feelings and say my freaking feelings? So annoying. This is a lesson for all ladies. If your man says that you're annoying for crying, you should break up with him on the spot. The correct approach when you see a girl crying is to go and comfort that girl, especially if you're the one that made her cry. But Oswelu doesn't really have a sense of uh, sympathy or compassion. Instead, he says that you're annoying for crying. Well, Kalani should say, you're annoying for playing video games and being a broke bum. Yo, hear me out. Kalani's family, her brother brains her pizza. Oswelu's family tries to beat up Kalani. Do we see a problem with these two different spectrums. I missed this version of you. Now you try to piss me off. Why you do this kind of stuff? You're uh, literally making fun of me for crying and saying I have no reason to cry. Because it's not make sense. I don't understand what Kalani saw in Oswello. He's quite literally the dumbest person ever come out of Samoa and he still is whipped by his mom and his sister and his family over there and they're just gonna keep causing problems in their relationship. It's a reoccurring theme that this dude doesn't have a brain and he's a puss puss. Kalani is quite literally down bad in her relationship and she seats the counsel from Lo, her father, about getting a divorce from Oswello because she really thinks that the relationship relationship should end. She's not happy in the relationship and she wants to seek the counsel from the man that she respects the most. I'm saying you have to think this over. It means you got two boys now. Yeah. They need their dad. You can't do that to them. Right away, I don't really understand why Kalani needs her dad's approval to divorce Oswelu when she didn't have his approval when she married Oswelu in the first place. The second point I want to bring up is Lo, Kalani's dad says the kids need their father. Well, they really don't. I mean, she could find a man that's a better father. So I don't really agree with that point to where when you have children with someone, you need to stay with that person. If that person's a bad father and a bad husband, you don't think you can find a better father, a better husband? Of course you can. Everyone has plenty of options. That's kind of like saying Kalani doesn't have the ability to find a good man. I disagree with that. I know it's kind of scary. Sorry, I just found out that my dad, Nicolas Cage, and I like the same girl, so that's really awkward. Little father, son, Eiffel Tower ain't hurt nobody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Kalani's father goes on to say that in Samoa, divorce is not really a thing. It's not typical, and usually you have to accept the consequences of your actions. I'll be honest, I like Lo. He seems like a cool dude, but for this point, this mentality is so flawed in so many ways. So if you're unhappy in a relationship, you should stay in that relationship because, oh, well, there's children involved. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You have to spend the rest of your life with someone that you're miserable with and be sad every day because you have to stay for your children or because it's not typical in the culture to separate. That's the dumbest fucking excuse I've ever heard in my life. And honestly, these traditional ideas to where you have to subject yourself to unhappiness due to culture are the dumbest things ever. And if you do that, you're just a drone and I have zero respect for you. Obviously the boys play a big role in everything. And I feel like I've stayed for as long as I have because of them, but I, I... I don't know, I just feel like I'm in between. I'm like right in the middle of everything where I'm trying to figure out what I should do. Kids are not the reason to stay. It seems like from their entire segment, Kalani has been willing to work on things and change the way she's been acting to make the relationship work. The problem is Oswello isn't willing to change. So if he's not willing to change and it's just one-sided, like one person is trying to fix the relationship or change for the sake of the children, you need to divorce that person. The choice is totally up to you, but you know, divorces should be your last result. You gotta fight. How long is patience? Like how long? You, know, you guys only been together for what, two years now? My understanding of what he's saying, he's choosing his cultural beliefs over his daughter's mental health. Why would you want your daughter to spend the rest of her life in a miserable relationship? Also, let's put our thinking caps on for a second. What do you think is better for two people, mom and dad to divorce and then find happy relationships and create two positive environments to raise children versus these kids growing up with parents that hate each other, there's constant fighting, it's a bad environment to grow up in. Why would you want that? Two years is a long time though, daddy. Mm, two years is nothing. Me and mama have <laughs> been around since we were 18. Do you ever believe in divorce? Divorce is just for people that gives up. I thought you were stronger than that. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything 
that could be considered a rational thought. This is such dog water advice from her dad, I'm actually blown away. Right now, let's take a look at that scene when Kalani finds out from an attorney that she could be responsible, financially responsible for Oswello for the rest of his life, unless he has a mysterious accident, gets deported. Rule just changed by President Trump. The new rule says that, you know, you're now obligated for a lifetime. I'm pretty sure Lowe was a Trump supporter until he heard this news, and now he's like, damn, Donald Trump, you really did us dirty with this. When I had my dad sign that, I could have sworn on my life that we would never get divorced. Well, well, well. How the turntables. This current season on Nine Day Fiance Happily Ever After, Kalani voices her frustrations with Oswelu that he needs to do better as a husband. So he decides to do a surprise destination. Here's the only issue. Instead of it being a romantic trip, Kalani thought it would be a good idea to bring her mother and the kids. I feel like the whole point of a romantic getaway, a surprise destination with your partner, is so that you guys can rekindle that flame, especially in the bedroom. So I'm very confused why Kalani thought it would be a good idea to bring her mom and the kids, especially because kids are always screaming on car rides. It's about the children, as opposed to it being about you rekindling that flame with your lover. So let's just roll the clip and review it together as a family, because I think it's incredibly awkward. Do you have like special activities planned? Yeah, that's why we get the toys, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Don't talk about things like that in front of my mother. I don't mean activity is sexual I mean, things. So. I came to babysit, not listen to all this nonsense. <laughs> Damn, Oswell, you talking about the butt plugs in front of mom? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I feel like that's a conversation you should have uh, just had privately, but let me know what you guys think about that. Actually, I don't know. I'm very crude, so I probably would have made jokes about it, but I think he was dead ass. <laughs> Kalani's like, yo, Oswello, you got any activities planned? And then Oswello's like, yeah, baby, I went on Adam and Eve, and I bought the Super Soaker Dildo Master 5000, baby. This would actually be the perfect video for an Adam and Eve sponsorship. Sadly, I'm not sponsored by them in this video. I'm happy to offer watching the kids so that they can have some more alone time. Sexuality or whatever is what we're here for. Being present in the car while they're both talking about it, that's a little too much for me. Honestly, I'm just hoping the mom has her own room and they're not all living in the same place because that's incredibly awkward when you're trying to bang out your wife and then the mom's in the other room. I already know for a fact this romance trip is not gonna go great, but at least Oswello is genuinely trying for once. They pull up to some cabins and right away, Kalani's not having it at all. She's very negative about the situation and she's like, this is why I don't like destinations because I didn't get to pick the destination. She also makes a joke that she's reliving her Mormon trauma from when she used to go to summer camp or something. Recite Mosiah 28, 13. Yo, Look, break it down. Check it. Therefore they did watch over their people and, and did nourish them with things pertaining to righteousness. What's up? What's good? Have you heard the good news? No, I'm just kidding. I have a lot of Mormon friends, actually. A lot of them are like, they're funny because like, they're like, I'm not allowed to drink coffee, but I see them pop pills like crazy. Yo, you Mormon, bruh? Soaking's tight. <laughs> Did you want two together? Um, it's a different one because uh, we come here for our romantic date. We're gonna be rock and roll tonight, so. Yo, too much info, but I love the boldness. We're gonna be rocking and rolling tonight. You know what, honestly, I think that's hilarious. I'm so happy he said, when he said that, my face lit up. Let me know what you guys think about that. As well, it goes on to say it's uncomfortable when my mother-in-law is here in the rock and roll of the house. Next thing you know, they get their keys, they walk into the cabin, and you can see right away that it's a shithole from the decor, but I guess also it smells bad because Kalani says, is there a reason why it smells like shit in here? The cabin probably smells shitty because Dev and Clyde stayed there the night before. So it's not off to a great start, guys. I'm not gonna lie. This is why you don't leave planning up to someone like Oswelu, who hasn't lived in the United States for long, has zero taste buds, and is used to probably sleeping in a hammock. I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually more interested in Kalani spilling the tea about what the cringe Mormon summer camp was like. Because from the way she talked about it, she seems like she had a bad experience, and I love the Mormon tea. Like, I think they're so funny. I really want to crash the Mormon convention they have because like it's a real thing. Like they really all meet up and like talk about what direction they want to take the business. I mean the religion in, and I'm in no way, shape or form a hater of Mormons. I have a lot of Mormon friends and I like Mormons. Okay. I think they're great. They're super positive. They have a study abroad program where they go and spread the good word and they go to a different country for like two years and learn the language and spread the word. Like, bro, that's the best study abroad program ever. And then you can like, like the guys aren't supposed to have sex, but I have a lot of friends that were totally sending girls the entire time and I would never snitch on them. But here's the thing, they all do it and they all pretend like, oh, we're good little church boys. Bro, they're not. One of my homies actually got caught and they just give you like a slap on the wrist and you're like, I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. 
he's still fucking girls. Like, come on. Kalani gives Aswello an A for effort, but a C for destination. She also goes on to spill a little bit of tea about her Mormon summer camp days. She says that she used to be on a bus with a bunch of girls and go and make bracelets and it was super weird and culty and she didn't like it at all. I want her to spill more tea because I want to know about the summer camp. Kalani goes on to say she wishes her husband knew what romantic meant as she continues to clean the place. Her and her mother are actually cleaning the place because it's dirty and I guess it smells bad in there. I feel bad for her, but at the same time, it's like, what do you expect from this guy? He like can't do anything himself. He's like a 12 year old. And it's like, once again, you should have wore a condom. When I see couples like this, it just reassures me that the best prescription is hoeing around, especially in your college days. You should have multiple partners, multiple experiences. As long as you like rub her up and you use protection and you're healthy and safe and you get yourself checked all the time. Yeah, do it. If I had to describe this romance trip in one word, I would say it's forced. Because since Kalani had that conversation with the attorney and the attorney told told her that she's gonna be financially responsible for this guy even if she divorces him. I feel like her mood has totally changed and right now she's in the mode to where I need to make it work with this guy. Kalani and Oswello open up and talk about their feelings and they hug it out and start to try and rekindle that flame and it's so nice to see, but at the same time, she was this close to freedom. I think is really immature and lazy, but I feel like he genuinely does love the boys and love Kalani. I just think that it could definitely be worse, but at the same time, as a girl, you shouldn't settle and as a guy, you shouldn't settle. And I feel like Kalani is settling for the sake of the children and for the sake of what the attorney said that she would be financially responsible for this guy no matter what. Oswello might have grown up a little bit because this time when Kalani's crying, he didn't say you're annoying. He said, don't cry, it's okay in a very calm voice. Blo told me that my wife wants to divorce. You know, she loved me, so I never feel she's serious. Okay, a couple things for Oswello. Why would you think she was joking? It's not a casual thing to tell your partner that you want to get a divorce or you're thinking about getting divorced. But this is really serious that she talked to the lawyer. I think when she do that, she lose my trust, but we both uh, make mistakes. Also, in my opinion, she shouldn't have to apologize for going to see the attorney or lawyer without him because she's been trying to fix the problem and also communicating the fact that she's unhappy in this relationship and wants to get a divorce. And he was ignoring that because he's too busy playing video games and jerking off. So she's well within her rights to go and see the attorney without him if she was serious about getting a divorce, which she was. And then she found out the news that she would still have to be financially responsible for him regardless of whether she divorces this guy or not. So what does she do? She tries to make it work for the million time because either way she gets screwed is that it's both of us working together and both of us fixing our marriage okay uh, maybe we just burn the fire here and write down all the bad things that we have. This couple was gonna do a fun activity where they were gonna write down all the negative feelings and emotions that they had and burn the notes together. Like a phoenix, it would basically symbolize the rebirth of their relationship. That was beautifully put by me, by the way, write that down. But Kalani stopped that idea because she didn't wanna start a forest fire, which is completely understandable because I feel like every single year, some dumbass in California starts a forest fire. So instead they decided the negative emotions they should put into a rock and chuck the rock and our IP to whatever animal Oswello killed with that rock because he threw that shit like a shot put. Ready? Where are we both? <laughs> 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 It's a clean slate for this couple and Oswello is starting to drive Uber or Lyft, I forget which one, but he needs a new car. So Kalani and him go to the car dealership to get a new car and he drops the fact that he wants to have another kid. It's exciting. This is like your first, first car purchase in your whole life. Yeah. You can tell right away that this couple thinks very differently in terms of what car Oswello should buy. You've got Kalani over here trying to sell him a hybrid car and saying, honey, it's very good on gas. Then you've got Oswello saying, oh baby, I don't like the interior on that one, but I like this one because it go vroom, vroom, vroom. Yo, Kalani, this is the father of your children, and he's saying, this car go vroom, vroom, vroom. And for this point, I just want to say, Kalani, RIP to your last brain cell, because that shit's going to leave the building in a couple years. There's some cars that would come. Those are all the big cars. No, I just want to look. Next thing you know, like a kid in a candy store, Oswello notices that there's minivans, and he's always wanted a minivan, I think, so he leads Kalani over there, and Kalani's like, baby, why do you need a big car? You don't need a big car. You need a car that's good on gas mileage. There are cheaper little ones and better on gas. Yeah, but there's not many people fit in. 
You only need to carry like three people. Baby, there's some uh, couples, they have a uh, lot of kids. The weirdest thing for me watching Asuelo is that he's not like any of my Samoan friends. They were all raised to be very responsible and like they were very disciplined, especially because they all had very strong father. Meanwhile, Asuelo is a silly head and he's very unresponsible. So I don't really understand how this happened. Like it's at the point to where I've seen a lot of people say maybe he's on the spectrum, but Kalani and her mother have shut that down and said that her mother works with people on the spectrum and that he's not on the spectrum. Spectrum. I don't know if he is or not, but I can confidently say that I've never seen a grown man act like this. Next thing you know, a car salesman comes up and starts talking to the lovely couple and trying to figure out what car they want so that he can make commission. And he doesn't really care what they want because he wants to make a commission. If you're going to be doing ride sharing, I would probably go with something good on gas, like one of the smaller vehicles. I don't think so, man. The minivan is good. I don't know what kind of brain activity is going on there, but the minivan is definitely not good on gas, Oswello, but feel free to disagree with the guy that sells cars for a living. But why do you want such a huge car? I just want a big one because we have another baby soon and it's gonna be all fit inside. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that would be great for a family. Yeah, that's weird, because I would actually prescribe a divorce, not another baby. Sheesh. <laughs> On a serious note, Oswello really wants to put another baby in Kalani when he's already financially struggling. He's living at his in-law's house. He doesn't make enough money to support his family he already has, so he wants to put another baby in her. Like, that's going to fix the problem. And he didn't tell her that he wants to have another baby. Like, this is the first time they've talked about this. As far as I'm concerned, this dude counts as a child. So instead of three children, Kalani would have four children. R.I.P., bruh. I'm sorry, a second. Yeah, sure, anytime. You come get me if you need anything. OK. Of course. Thank you. Let me know. Last thing I'll say about this is if Kalani gets accidentally pregnant again, it's her fault because she knows that this guy wants to put a baby in her. And you got to be real careful if you're banging this dude. Yo, he might not pull out next time. Why would you do Don't that? Don't look at me like that. Why would you do that? Doing what? You just said we're going to have another baby. I want to have another baby. That's something you would talk to me about, not a stranger. I know this dude is an irrational thinker and he's dumb as rocks, but in what universe, if you're already struggling financially in your romance life and struggling as a father, why would you think adding another baby would fix those problems? Like, I really am genuinely curious. I hate how, like, you see poor families have, like, 10 fucking kids. How about have one or two kids and, like, give them really good life? You don't need eight kids because then what's going to happen you're going to grow up in poverty like all the kids are going to grow up in poverty now we going to split this plum or not dog what is the point of that like some of the richest people i've ever met in my life have one or two kids another shady thing oswello did is he invited his mother to come and hang out with them during christmas time when kalani doesn't know about that my mom she's gonna go back to samo so she really wants to see us before she go back to samo so Tam is going to drive her down here to see us. Which is really messed up to do because there's bad blood between Kalani, her family, and Oswello's family because they're moochy people. And they constantly only hit them up for money. Oswello just invited his mother and sister that threatened his wife Kalani with physical violence before to Christmas with Kalani's family without even considering his wife's opinion on the matter. Dude has mad mommy issues. His mom straight up to his face said she only wants money and doesn't care about her grandchildren. When? A few days. In a few days? Yeah. Well, we just got to remember this is Christmas. Sounds nice and jolly of you and everything, Dad, but she also didn't threaten you. Sick. Way to give everyone a couple days notice, Oswello. Now they have to repair food for your moochy sister and mom. I know you're inconsiderate asses and helping in the kitchen. How about have some respect for the family that has helped you in America and put a roof over your head? But nah, you're too busy chasing the mother that will never love you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, a lot of people talk a lot of things when our videos. So we'll see what she does in person? Yeah. Okay. I love that Lo is super confident in his daughter's ability to throw hands. Tammy is 100% getting her ass beat by Kalani's sister. Usually the ones that talk the most are the first to get humbled, and I think everyone wants to see Tammy get humbled. In the most recent episode of Happily Ever After, Oswello goes over to pick up his mom and sister and remind them to be on best behavior at his in-law's house for Christmas. My mom apologized uh, at, during the child all, but uh, Tammy didn't feel like this is not going to go well. 
and I have a strong feeling she will be on a bad behavior to my family. Hey kid, you should have thought this through before inviting them to Christmas. Also, don't say your family. Clearly, you prioritize your toxic family in Samoa that doesn't love you over the family you started with Kalani. Also, I noticed that Oswell's mom and sister aren't bringing anything over. You know, usually when you're invited to Christmas dinner at someone else's house, you wouldn't have enough decency to bring over maybe some food or some wine, something like that. But what can I say? These people aren't classy at all. Long time never see you, son. You look handsome. Thank you so much. Give me a kiss, son. Thank you. Eh, Mom, you see that kiss? It wasn't even that real. He was just like... Mm. Yo, Tammy, would you rather see Oswello give your mom a five-minute Frencher like last time? He's given her some really suspect kisses in the past. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check out my past videos on this couple because uh, Oswello at one point gave his mom the longest kiss ever and it made everybody wildly uncomfortable. So you still work at your same job or have a different job now? Right, sure, because it is really good job. It's good money. You make a lot of money. When are you gonna be able to give some to mom? She's 70, she's getting old. Aswello hasn't even been there for five minutes and they are already asking him for money. Tammy hasn't changed at all. She and her mom view Aswello as a source of income and at this moment, he should walk out the door because it's obvious they're gonna make Kalani and her family really uncomfortable, but he won't do that because he's inconsiderate and unappreciative of the family that actually looks out for him and that's Kalani's family. Finally, Aswello brings up the point that on the tell-all, his sister threatened everyone with physical violence. The tell-all knew you. Freddy, everyone, you're gonna beat them. When this topic gets brought up, Oswello's mom is very quick to say, but that was so long ago. Yeah, it still happened though. Like, what do you mean? Just because something happened a long time ago doesn't mean that it's void. Instead of apologizing, Oswello's mom says, make sure that your wife is nice to Oswello. Oswello's sister straight up says, if anyone starts anything with her, she's gonna beat them up. Since Tammy's had zero character development, I'm pretty sure that her and Kalani's sister are definitely gonna throw down, guys. Let's look forward to that. This is actually gonna be a good event. This might actually break records. Could be bigger than the uh, Connor McGregor fight where he got dursted by that Dustin Portier dude. Tammy doesn't apologize and she says basically if anyone says anything she doesn't like, she's ready to throw hands. So Oswello's definitely gonna ruin Christmas for this family. I can't wait to see this fight happen. Let me know what you guys think about this. The word on the street is that they're already divorced. Thank you so much for watching this video. Comment below, subscribe. Let me right, let me right. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.